What do you want from life? Is it money? Fame? A good relationship? Whatever your answer is, there's probably one thing we can all agree on. We want to be happy. But why don't we have that already? And why is that so hard to find? What if I told you that you were taught to be unhappy? to make yourself unhappy and that all you have to do to be happy is to throw away those lessons and learn new ones. That's what Don Miguel Ruiz tells us in his book, The Four Agreements, which became so popular, it was a New York Times bestseller for over 10 years. The core idea he presents is so powerful and enlightening that he's garnered praise from all over the world. Oprah recommended his book to her audience three separate times. In this video, we'll explore what the four agreements are, where they come from, and how you can use them to reclaim the joy, freedom, and curiosity that you had when you were a child. For more great book summary videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button. Don Ruiz tells us that all the rules we have in the world are agreements that we make as a society. And I don't just mean laws either. Everything is an agreement. From morals and religions to cultures and relationships. According to him, they exist the way they do because we agree that that's how they should be. And that's the only reason they're like that. But where did we get those rules and how did we agree to live by them? According to Don Ruiz, we learned them as children before we could even think logically. We learned everything from what's right and wrong, how to behave, what to believe, and who we should be. Our families, our schools, and our cultures taught us what's beautiful and what's ugly, what's acceptable and what's not. Our little brains vacuumed it all up, made it a part of our world, and now we believe the rules are as real as sunshine. But we never got to choose which rules we agreed to, did we? We were trained like little puppies. If you screamed in the supermarket, you were punished. If you shared your toys, you were praised. Good job, Gabriella. And if you got braces, you might have been bullied. The more rules we learned, the less happy and free we became. As we grew up, we traded our childish joy and curiosity for things like productivity, conformity, and responsibility. We stopped living in the moment and started worrying about our past and our future. You see, over time, the rules became a part of us. They started living in our heads. We didn't need our parents to tell us what's right and what's wrong anymore. Anymore, we learned to punish ourselves. Don Ruiz explains that over time, this belief system becomes an inner judge. It criticizes our actions, our thoughts, and our feelings. And when we don't conform to its rules, it punishes us with guilt, shame, and unhappiness. There's no justice in this internal court. We're not punished only once for our mistakes. We're punished over and over and over, and sometimes we suffer for years over one wrong act. We suffer so much that some of us turn those judgments outwards. We force others to suffer from the agreements we made. And when they don't comply, we often guilt them with shame and blame. We can escape this cycle. According to Don Ruiz, we can return to the freedom and joy that we experienced as children. It's still inside of us today. All we have to do is take another look at the rules that we've agreed to. I didn't sign up for this. We can replace the ones that hurt us with new agreements. Agreements that encourage us to be happy instead of suffering. Here are the agreements that Don Miguel suggests we start with. First, agree to be impeccable with your words. That means use them wisely and intentionally. Words have power. We can use them to hurt each other or to lift each other up. So don't use your words against yourself and don't use them against others. When you call yourself stupid, ugly, or useless, can you see how that makes you unhappy? And when you just Describe yourself as confident, strong, and capable. Can you see how that builds you up and empowers you? Using words to put people down is also not helpful. So don't do it! Nobody's happier when you criticize them. Be impeccable also means say what you mean and use your words to communicate your truth. If you're annoyed with a friend, it's not helpful to call them an idiot. It's much more effective to let him know that you feel annoyed and explain why. Use your words to solve the real problem. Don Rui says this agreement matters the most because because the words we use shape our world. When we call ourselves ugly, we begin to believe that we're ugly. When we call someone an idiot, we begin to believe that they're an idiot. So use this power for good. Use your words to be a healing, uplifting influence on others and on yourself. As you do, you'll start to see how you use your words. And if the way that you use them doesn't support you, you can begin untangling some of the agreements that hurt you. It can be surprising to discover how many words in our vocabulary can hurt, criticize, or judge. The second agreement is don't take anything personally. Easier said than done. 
I know. But you see, everyone lives in their own set of agreements. That means we each see a different world. Imagine you're in a movie theater watching all the events of your life filmed through your eyes. You see your family, your birthdays, your school exactly as you envisioned them. Now imagine you go to another room where your mother's life is playing and you watch all the same events through her eyes. But everything is so different from her perspective. The things that were so important in your film might be small in hers. And events that might have seemed unimportant to you might have meant everything to her. And some events could be important to both you and her in completely different ways. Because our beliefs and agreements are so different, we don't see the same world. We don't have the same agreements. So when someone criticizes you or uses their words to hurt you, it's not about you. It's about what they think and what they see in their world. And here's another thing, your opinions about others, they're not universal, they're not truths. They only exist in your world, so don't take them too seriously. In fact, don't even take your own opinions about yourself seriously. Those aren't concrete truths either. Unhelpful ideas about yourself are agreements too, and those can change, so question them. As an example, there's a really great series I watched called Self-Centeredness, The Source of All Grief. It really opened my eyes to the fact that when I take things personally, I'm basically making everything about me, and that self-centeredness is what makes me upset so easily. Just think about it. If I'm upset, it's because I'm thinking, how could you do that to me? Why don't you care about me? Me, 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 me. When you don't take things personally, it's easier to accept that not everyone is living in your world. So you try to join them in their world. You can ask yourself questions like, I wonder what's going on with them. I wonder if there's a way that I could support them. Or I know they aren't dealing with me. I know they're dealing with their idea of me based off of their world. When you stop taking things personally, you become immune to other people's harmful words. It doesn't make you angry when people criticize you or judge you. So you can live your life however you choose. And you can be open and loving to everyone because you don't take it personally when someone rejects you. Ultimately, they aren't rejecting you. They're rejecting their idea of you from their world. The third agreement is simple. Don't make assumptions. We make assumptions when we don't have enough information to know what's really going on. We can't stand not knowing, so we guess. In the process, we create an imaginary world and we get upset about things that we put together from a few facts and massive personal interpretation. How well does that? Say for example you have a date and you're waiting for your partner to show up. They're late. Why are they late? Do they have too much work to do? Were they in a car crash? Are they cheating on me? No. They left the country. How could they leave the country without telling me? So much conflict, stress and pain comes from assuming we know things that we don't know. But if we can't assume, what can we do? Communicate. If you want to know something, ask. So here's an example. I used to struggle with social anxiety. When I was in a group of people, I was always worrying about what they thought about me. I eventually read a book about it. And with the book and professional help, I was able to dramatically reduce my fear. Now I barely think about what others think about me in a group. But if something does happen that I can feel myself start to misinterpret, instead of living in scenarios like I used to, I ask. I say something like, hey, so this happened and I'm just checking in. What did you mean by that? And 10 out of 10, it's never the scenario that I thought of. If people asked more questions and listened, there would be more peace in the world. When you stop making assumptions, you focus on what's really happening. You stop having conflicts with people about imaginary things and you have fewer misunderstandings with important people in your life. The final agreement is always do your best. I'm sure you've heard this before, but have you thought about what that means? Your best is not the highest bar you've ever achieved. It's not the greatest thing you've ever done. And it's not giving it 110%. Your best varies day to day, moment to moment. It's the best you can do right now in your current circumstances with the tools you have. Doing your best is about accepting reality. If you're not feeling great today, then today's best efforts won't look the same as tomorrow's. And that's fine. This is so important because being realistic about what your best means today actually frees you. It makes your best achievable on a daily basis. When you always do your realistic best, you're kinder to yourself and that makes you happier, calmer and more relaxed.
You don't feel as lazy or overworked because you don't push yourself to do more than you can manage. And you don't feel guilty for doing less. And when you look back on what you might call a failure and see that you were doing your best that day, you can forgive yourself. You were doing your best with the information, the skills, and the person that you were at that time. And it's okay. Practicing this specific agreement can be tough. So Don Ruiz offers some tips. He says, practice saying no when you want to say no and say yes when you want to say yes. That way you'll spend more of your time the way you want to spend it. And if you struggle to keep the four agreements, don't beat yourself up for it. Just keep trying. Focus on one moment at a time and do what you can in each moment. Finally, let go of your past mistakes and regrets. The person you were did what they could. Even if you hate the results, hurting yourself over it isn't helpful. So look forward instead. Tomorrow is another day. As you go about the rest of your day, think about the agreements that you've made, all the beliefs you've made about who you are, what you should be, how you should or should not behave. Try to think about how real they are and whether they're good for you. And remember the four agreements. Be impeccable with your words. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. And finally, always do your best. So let me know in the comments section, what was your biggest lesson from this video? Do you practice any of these four agreements? Which one, if any, do you struggle with? The book also has lots of great insights into reclaiming your happiness that we didn't have the time to get into in this video. If you're interested in going deeper, check out the short form guide to the four agreements. Short form makes the world's best guides to non-fiction books, complete with well-crafted short exercises to help you learn faster and remember more. You can get a five day free trial and a discounted annual subscription if you go to shortform.com forward slash YouTube. Click the link in the description below and support the author and publisher by buying the four agreements. A link to buy the book is below as well. And finally, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next short form video. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.